Yeah, my thesis topic um, is the impact of non-indigenous species on the complex topology of an estuary food web, in this case, the Guadiana estuary, supervised by Catarina Vinagre. Change and anthropogenic effects, the introduction of non-indigenous indigenous species is increasing worldwide. This uh, is really uh, dangerous as they, can become, as they can become invasive if they don't find any competitors and in, uh, or predators. So that is, uh, is really important to distinguish among non-indigenous and invasive because the, ecosystem, the consequences they could have are really different. So estuaries are especially vulnerable ecosystem for the introduction of non-indigenous species due to human agglomeration and uh, rise of uh, seawater temperature. Uh, and in this case, we are going to we study the Guadiana estuary located in the south of the Iberian Peninsula that has suffered uh, major changes from 2002, uh, making it a hot spot for non-indigenous for the introduction of these non-indigenous species. So let's see which non-indigenous species we found in the Guadiana estuary. First, we have the freshwater hydroid Cordylophora caspia, the black sea jellyfish Blackfordia virginica, the isopod Cynidota laticauda, the Atlantic blue crab Calignectes sapidus, the oriental shrimp Palaemon macrodactylus, and the weak fish Thinostium regalis. Uh, as you can see, some of the uh, common names already indicate that the Guadiana estuary is not among the native ranges, as for example the oriental shrimp, shrimp Palaemon macrodactylus. Uh, it is really important to uh, understand how uh, this uh, species, um, well, the feeding methods and the, pre and the prey and predators they have, in order to see how they can affect the ecosystem. So. The main objectives of this study uh, is, first of all, analyze the food web network of the Guadiana estuary for the first time, uh, before and after the introduction of, non, of these non-indigenous species to see how uh, they are affecting the ecosystem. And we will do this uh, by comparing the properties. Secondly, uh, we need to understand the trophic role of these new species to see how they affect the native species. And third of all, this uh, study will contribute to the uh, exploration of universal, universal organizational patterns uh, of complex food web networks throughout a comparison with ecosystem previously analyzed. So let's start with the material and methods. Uh, the study site, as I uh, previously mentioned, is located in the is the Guadiana estuary, located in the south of the Iberian Peninsula, in the border between Spain and Portugal. Up in the river in 2002, the Alqueva Dam was constructed, reducing uh, highly reducing the amount of freshwater input, and thus uh, changing the abiotic and biotic conditions. These uh, changes mixed with the rise of temperature has made this ecosystem um, a perfect place for the colonization of non-indigenous species. So for, for the food web modeling before and after the, the, the introduction of these non-indigenous species, two matrices uh, were created with all the predator-prey links that are a, a high number. And they were introduced in the software Network 3D. This software, as you can see, creates a visual representation of the food web network uh, by putting together the, uh, the species with the same predators and preys into the nodes. But it also uh, is, uh, but it also calculates the properties of the network. That uh, is really important because from this visual representation, we cannot see many things. So in total, 18 properties were calculated, but uh, these four were, were um, taken with more detail. So generality is the number of prey a species has. A vulnerability is the number of predators a species has. The trophic level is the position a species occupies in the food web, depending the depending of, of the, the, the relationships, uh, predator prey relationships. And the connectivity is the general number of links in the food web network. So uh, we have found a total of three, uh, 320 species, six of them uh, were non-indigenous species. 
Here you can see the food web networks and the trophic web networks before and after the introduction of non-indigenous species. In the trophic web networks, we can see the nodes uh, that are the trophic uh, species, as I explained before, with different um, colors depending on the, on the taxa level. And the links are the predator-prey uh, relationships. So as from these uh, representations, uh, visual representations, we cannot see a lot of difference, just uh, that there are more species. We need to focus in the properties. So uh, in this table, we can see that some of the properties has slightly changed with the introduction of non-indigenous species, such as uh, trophic species, the links per species, the resource count, and the consumer count, increasing with, this, uh, with the introduction of these non-indigenous species. More results. Uh, we have found that Calinectes sapidus and Palaemon macrodactylus are among the top 10 taxa for connectivity, and together with, with Thinostium regalis, are among the highest generalists. All the, the non-indigenous species are intermediate species, which means that they have predators and prey. Uh, they are predators and prey at the, at the same time. And all of them, except Blackfordia virginica, have among their uh, prey a highly val valuable uh, commercial species. This needs to be uh, taken into consideration, of course, and we will discuss it later. So when comparing the properties with a small intermittent, with, well, with other estuaries, we have found that um, most of the properties slightly change, but anyways, uh, the properties are much more similar to the small intermittent estuaries, what capture our attention and will be discussed later. And when we compare, with, we compare it with other ecosystems, uh, like for example, a lake or even terrestrial ecosystems, the only property that stands out is a uh, links per species. So this work shows for the first time how the non-indigenous species affect the ecosystem of the Guadiana estuary and provides an insight of the role, of the trophic role this uh, species plays in the, in the ecosystem. So as previously mentioned, Calignetes sapidus and Palaemon macrodactylus are among the top 10 um, taxa for connectivity, meaning that they have a lot of uh, links, uh, both predators and prey and their presence can alter the whole ecosystem if they, if they increase. And uh, if, if this happens, if they increase and they become uh, invasive and they increase, um, dietary and ha uh, habitat uh, overlap will happen with, um, with native species. Indeed, the, the oriental shrimp Palaemon macrodactylus has high probabilities to compete with uh, other species such as Palaemon langirostris and Krangon Krangon. Also, this species has a, let's say, let's say a good property that is thermal, uh, that has a high thermal plasticity, making it resilient to the increase in water temperatures, uh, and thus uh, favoring the, their establishment in this ecosystem. Uh, Calignectes sapidus uh, has the potential to impact different benthic communities, communities at different, uh, uh, different uh, trophic levels, which is also really dangerous. And in this ecosystem, it's already competing with the crab Carcinus marinas. Uh, the impacts of Cordylophora caspia are not really well known, but uh, most likely it would have habitat competence. But also, if it increases, it could have uh, major consequences because uh, it facilitates the settlement of other uh, non-indigenous species, such as some uh, um, species of, of mussels. Blackfordia virginica is a zooplankton predator uh, uh, that is already competing with other zooplanctivorous species, such as Engraulis and Crassicolus. This will generate a depletion on the zooplankton communities and increase in the phytoplankton and an increase in eutrophication, which uh, will affect the benthic primary uh, producers having economic and environmental consequences. Sinedota laticauda is a well-established species that alone can be like not dangerous, but um, in the occurrence with other zooplanctivorous species, such as Blackfordia virginica, 
could have synergistic negative impacts. And finally, Cynorsin regalis uh, is really similar to the Miger uh, Arginosomus regius, uh, that is a nature species, and um, and they, uh, they belong to the same family and they have the same feeding methods. So dietary and habitat overlap will happen for sure. So as I said before, most of the non-indigenous species found in the Guadiana estuary have among their preys important uh, commercial species. Uh, this will impact not only the ecosystem balance by reducing the numbers of these species, but also um, in the economic aspects, as uh, it will affect the people that rely on these species, on these commercial species, as a livelihood. As the consequences are not really uh, clear, uh, we need to take mitigation measures. Which are these mitigation measures? We can have monitoring programs, uh, we can establish some monitoring plans for both the non-indigenous species, and, but also to the commercial species that are, being, uh, that are, uh, are among their prey. And also a new, a new measure is to include some of these uh, non-indigenous species as new fishing resources uh, and making them commercial species. This has already been done uh, in the Algarve region with some of the species uh, that we have in this uh, study. Uh, it has been done with Calignete sapidus, Tinostium regalis, and Blackfordia virginica. I encourage you to go to the Facebook uh, webpage because it's really interesting. And now talking about the properties, the Guadiana estuary falls uh, between the values, the normal values of the whole ecosystems, but biodiversity is much higher. This is uh, due to its location in uh, transition waters between temperate and subtropical zones where cold temperate, warm temperate, and uh, tropical species occur together. Due to climate change, this biodiversity may increase in the future uh, as the tropical species will expand their ranges. Um, an interesting property that also stands out is connectance. This uh, high connectance uh, makes the food web network more robust, and um, it has been found that this connectance decreases the colonization success of the non-indigenous species. So this will be a positive uh, future for the, for the food web network. And uh, this means that the food web network will be less impacted by the, the introduction of these non-indigenous species. And uh, I talked about this before, that uh, takes, um, takes our, our attention because uh, this is unusual as the Guadiana estuary uh, geomorphology talking um, is more similar to an open estuary. But um, our hypothesis is that uh, due to the reduce of the freshwater input and thus the increase in salinity, uh, the properties or the characteristics of the Australian, uh, um, Wadiana estuary are more similar to the small intermittent uh, estuaries. So to conclude, uh, this study provides the first insight into the Wadiana estuary food web network and the possible change due to the introduction of non-indigenous species. In the properties, we didn't see major changes, but uh, however, uh, some species need special attention, such as uh, Calignite sapidus, Palaemon macrodactylus, and Thinostium regalis. All the properties fall within the values of other ecosystems, so we can conclude that even though the introduction of non-indigenous species did not alter the general ecosystem functioning, some species play an important topological trophic role, so they need to uh, we need to uh, create a special monitoring plans. And the future perspectives is to model the future food web network of the Guadiana estuary, taking into consideration new possible introductions, as well as the range expansion of the um, tropical species. Here you have the references, and thank you for your attention.